Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another episode of Under the Radar Season 2. Thank y'all for the support. Now, the big time. My guy, big time Cole Anthony, son of Greg Anthony. You know the guy in 2K? Yeah, yeah, Greg Anthony. All right. But this guy, man, this guy has been beasting out in the NBA. I mean, I remember when I watched Cole Anthony, I knew that he was going to become somebody in the NBA. I mean, there was so much difference between him and his dad in terms of their games. His dad was kind of like a Patrick Beverly that could kind of score. I mean, his dad played 11 seasons in the NBA, but man, Cole is just a different breed. His dad was just 6 feet tall. Cole is 6 foot 3, man. Damn, like, three inches difference. He could shoot the three ball. He could handle the ball. He can finish inside, pass it to his teammates. I mean, this guy was everything. I mean, he showed it on the court in Oak Hill Academy. He averaged, he averaged around 18.5 points per game. That is even amazing. I mean, not only he's amazing offensively, but defensively too. And he's the only player in Oak Hill Academy history to average a triple-double. And by the way, guys, just to remind you, Oak Hill is the high school that literally breeds NBA players or NBA superstars or standouts, whatever you want to call them. People like Brandon Jennings, Kevin Durant, and most famous Carmelo Anthony and his old battles with, of course, LeBron James. I mean, this guy was just a killer in high school. He was second in his class. I mean... Really high recruited colleges that actually wanted him. I mean, the colleges are North Carolina, Georgetown, University of Miami, Oregon, and Wake Forest. And let me tell you guys, that's an amazing type of schools to be recruited specifically for basketball. Obviously, North Carolina's greatest players, of course, Michael Jordan. You got University of Miami, amazing jerseys, solid... uh starters in the NBA. You have Notre Dame. I mean, Notre Dame's okay. I mean, they produced pretty solid bench warmers and some starters here and there. But Oregon's obviously an amazing program. And then Wake Forest, of course, with Chris Paul and everything. But out of all of them, he picked the University of North Carolina, which is the best choice you can possibly make in your basketball career. If North Carolina calls your name and you don't see Duke or Kentucky, take it, dude. Take it, man. Just take it. It's one of the triad schools, which I call the triad. The triad is Duke, North Carolina, and Kentucky. If one of those three schools call you and the other two don't call you, just please go to one of them. I mean, he had an amazing freshman season in North Carolina. I mean, if the pandemic didn't hit, I wouldn't have bet that North Carolina would have been winning the NCAA championship. I mean, to definitely win uh, March Madness. I mean, Cole was beasting. Not only is passing into his teammates, giving such an amazing and body control floaters, man. I mean, it's so hard to twist and turn your body in certain situations that pave you to a jump shot. I mean, normally... The shots that I'm showing you right here are jump shots, like a stop and pop kind of thing. But he converts it into a floater, which is just amazing. Not only that, but his defense, his athleticism really showed in that freshman season. I mean, he was crazy that season. And I knew that, okay, I think um, Cole needs to work on his three-point consistency and definitely his consistent... Um, what should I call it? Consistent passing. Yes, he can pass. He averaged like three assists per game that freshman season in the Tar Heels. But let me just tell you, he did. He passed the rock, but not a lot. I mean, he has four assists, five assists, six assists per game. It's a very inconsistent, but it's good, you know? I mean, this guy was hyped up. I mean, I remember like my friends would never, ever um make me like talk crap about Cole Anthony because everyone's like bro he's insane I'm like yeah he is insane because there's such an evolution and such a disparity between him and his dad's game his dad is just defense and 
just normal scoring, but this guy can shoot the three. This guy's athletic as hell. He's three inches taller. And he also is a defensive specialist. I mean, it's perfect. I mean, man, it's perfect. Now, in, he entered his name in the 2020 NBA draft, and he was picked 15th overall by the Orlando Magic. Now, let me tell you guys the situation with Cole Anthony in Orlando. Now, this is what basically happened. Since, uh, for the past couple of years, the Magic have been struggling for a constant playmaker. I mean, you've seen good playmakers come and go, but you're seriously going to let your offense surround MCW? And if you guys don't know about MCW, his name is Michael Carter-Williams. And yeah, whatever. You don't need to talk about Michael Carter-Williams. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a nobody. Uh, sorry. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look... Have you seen in the past couple drafts that Orlando really has a heavy on wings? They love wing players, like small forward, power forward. I mean, yes, they have Aaron Gordon, who's blossoming into nearly an all-star type of player who can literally pop out anytime. They have Jonathan Isaac. They have Cam Birch, which they just use from time to time. They have Mo Bamba. I mean, their length in... Orlando is just crazy. They just need to work on their offense. Their defense is meh, meh. But their offense is getting better. I mean, it's so unfortunate that uh, Markel Fultz's season literally got cut short just because of that uh, torn ACL. And I honestly felt bad. I mean, man, I mean, Markel was having a blast of the season. But it was a blessing in disguise for Orlando. For giving a chance at my boy Cole. I mean, Cole has been killing it lately, man. He's been passing, dishing the rock. Popping it like Carmelo Anthony. You know, like popping the midi. As what I call me and my friends. PBA jump shots. Uh-huh, corner jump shots. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sir. And then creative finishes. You can end one on the ball. I mean, this guy literally gave Brooklyn a hard time. I've only seen a couple of people this season make Brooklyn, I mean the newly invented Brooklyn with James Harden, a living hell. And I only smell, what do I smell? Two people. And their names are Cole Anthony and Colin Sexton. They're both dogs and they're both going to be amazing players in the NBA. Now, I'm honestly going to say that my guy Cole Anthony, I'm saying next season, my bet, as he averages around 16 or more. That's my bet. Now, I know right now he's inconsistent, but guys, it's been just a couple weeks ever since he became a starter, man. I mean, just imagine. It's so much difference of getting used to 16 minutes of playing time and doubling that as a starter. So it takes a while to shift. You can't really expect an instant uh, performance. You know, it's not always that the case. I mean, Caruso did not grow in one day. I mean, yes, he had that block play, but it took him 20 games, 30 games, couple months just to start getting used to more and more minutes being thrown at him. I mean, it's basically getting used to it. I mean, that's what you have to do when you're a rookie. You have to get used to the fact that you're in the NBA, you're not in college anymore, you're in the best league in the world. You're being with one of the best conferences in the world, which is the East, obviously. Even though I wanted this guy to come around like maybe like top 10, I projected in my graph or my draft board, he'd go around top 10, top 20, top 15, like within that array, and I got it. I got it. I really been wanting to feature my guy Cole for some time now, but I'm just very unsure what team is he going to be. But he went to Orlando. So if you guys like more videos like this, hit that red sub button. It doesn't take much time. Just five seconds, man. Five seconds to get endless content every Thursday. That sounds like a good deal in May. Hit that like button so you can tell me that you guys love these NBA talks, you and me. And guys, I got a surprise for y'all when we hit 100, all right? It's not a big surprise, but it's going to be for everybody, not just me. Not just you guys, and you girls, and my ladies, <laughs> but it's for everybody so we can all 
let me just give you guys a clue. It will unite us. Alright? That's the only clue I'm giving you guys of my 100 subscriber surprise. So, watch in the coming weeks. Hit that red button. We are 8 more away as of I'm filming this amazing video. So, join the army. Join the family. Love you guys. Love you laddies. And see you next week. Bye-bye.